So you guys remember I posted a video uh, about four or five videos back that showed several guys hopping out of a car over by 66 in Halstead and just spraying the place up, man, and uh, they hit an infant baby in the head in that incident? Well, I have good news. The bullet miraculously did not go into the baby's brain. The bullet is actually still in the baby's brain, but it's like lodged, I mean, not in the baby's brain, lodged in the baby's head, but it's not actually in the brain matter part itself. So the baby is doing fine, and the baby was actually like looking around and, and uh, acting like her normal self, like while the bullet was in there, while the doctors had, had the baby in the hospital and everything, man, but the doctors were able to save her and prevent the bullet from uh, from entering any of the brain matter. So. That is a miracle, man, and, and glad that baby is doing well. But uh, the, the family now, the mother, has decided that she is done with Chicago and she is leaving Chicago. This is actually not the first time that, uh, that a member of the family has been shot. She was actually shot before when she was not even the intended target. She was just sitting in a car and somebody came by shooting, I guess, at somebody else and hit her. And uh, she lives in Inglewood, okay, I think. That's where this incident, that's where both shooting incidents took place. And she now has decided that she is leaving Chicago now. His mom, though, you know, she lived in Inglewood, okay, which is, you know, one of the top three neighborhoods in the city of Chicago as far as violence. You know, Austin, Garfield Park, Inglewood, those are the top three. So she's decided that she's done with Chicago and she's leaving the city completely. Uh, Inglewood is not a representation of the entire city, okay? Before I proceed with anything else in this video, I'm going to just say what she's doing uh, is a little bit overkill, okay, as far as, like, throwing the whole city out just because, you know, Inglewood is bad. I mean, Inglewood is, like, the worst of the worst as far as Chicago. So you don't necessarily need to leave the entire city just because, you know, you've experienced situations like that in an area like Inglewood. That's that's a particularly bad spot. There's, there's plenty of spots in Chicago that are not anywhere near as bad as Inglewood and that are equivalent to some place that you're going to find like in another part of the country but i don't disagree with her decision though and i don't think that she's wrong for making the decision i do actually agree with her and i'll explain why a little bit later man but first um the baby man uh you know shout out to the doctors for being able to save this baby man and uh the one month old she was only one month she was one of seven people that was wounded in that mass shooting and it took place on july 1st if you guys remember and uh, the baby's name is Terriana. She's the youngest gun violence victim this year and in recent memory. She's one of 212 kids under the age of 17 that have been shot this year alone. And uh, the mom said, quote, I'm getting out of here today. I have to leave Chicago. I love this city, but I can't stay anymore. And I give the mom, you know, I, I totally agree with what the mom is doing, okay? But the baby girl was strapped in her car seat in the back seat of her mom's car when they were parked over at 66 in Halstead. When police say three men jumped out of a black Jeep and started firing in all directions, and you guys saw that on video, it happened around 8 p.m. Police say six adults were struck, and Terriana was uh, only four weeks old, and she was shot in the head. So a police officer took them to a nearby hospital, but they ended up at Comer Children's Hospital, where the baby underwent emergency surgery. Terriana never stopped breathing, and the bullet, which is still lodged in her head, did not puncture her brain. So the mom said, I, I didn't ever think that my baby was going to die because she was just looking at me like, Mama, what happened? I love these doctors, and thank you so much. I want to thank you all so much for saving my baby. So as the uh, as the media is reporting, this is not the family's first bout with gun violence. She herself was shot. The mom was shot seven years ago, just six blocks from where her daughter was wounded. She said, I was sitting in my car, and someone came past shooting, and I got shot. And uh, she is now not willing to take any more chances, the media is saying, and they are moving. She said, it happens everywhere, but Chicago is the worst. It's the worst. And again, let me just you know qualify what she's saying inglewood okay she lives in like the worst part of chicago leaving the entire city just because of inglewood is not like necessarily an, uh, a hundred percent necessary decision but chicago police so that nobody's in custody but they continue to investigate and if you know any of the men in the surveillance video guys please call police and you can remain anonymous remember so you know gang retaliation or whoever did this their retaliation coming back on you it doesn't need to be that way you know what i'm saying if you have any information uh you can remain totally anonymous man uh, or do it through somebody like me, you know, give the information to one of us bloggers, we'll snitch, you know what I'm saying, and we'll take the heat, I mean, the heat's already on me, so I mean, you can give me the information, you know what I'm saying, I'll let the cops know if you want these guys booked, because shooting a baby, shooting in all directions like that, man, is totally out of pocket, but uh, getting on to uh, what I was going to say about this mom's decision, okay, so she's doing something that I've been telling people to do for a long time, which is don't wait, you know what I'm saying, people wait till something happens, by the time something happens, it's too late, I say the cutoff point, you know, when it's like really urgent is if you have kids, especially boys, 
when they get to be around the seventh or eighth grade. Okay, when they get to be around the seventh or eighth grade, the gangs start to recruit them heavily. And by recruit, I don't mean the gangs are actually coming to them and being like, hey, shorty, you know, come run with us or, you know, join this gang or we're going to, you know, beat you up or whatever. That kind of thing used to happen back in the day. It's not like that today. Today, most often the quote unquote recruiting happens simply by the peer pressure. Okay. When you live on one of these blocks, you're friends with all the guys on that block just because you live there. You know, you live right there around them. You went to school with them when they were younger and stuff like that. Just the pressure to, you know, be about your homies and like, you know, support them, you know, according to what the, the streets call support when something goes down. Okay. So, you know, they get older, they start getting into it. Somebody slides on them, hits one of the homies. This is somebody that your kid grew up with, okay? Your son. This is somebody that he was, you know, a toddler with. He went to grammar school with him. Back before anybody was gangbanging, he was cool with him, right? Now that other kid, he gets into it with somebody. Something happens to him. Now everybody on the block is looking at your son like, what are you going to do? Are you really his homie or what? You know what I'm saying? Like, now your son is facing the pressure of if he doesn't slide for that guy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, your son might have never done nothing like bad in his life. He might never have been in the streets. If he doesn't slide for his dead homie and go and, you know, try and shoot somebody else in revenge and retaliation for it, the whole neighborhood is looking at him like he was never really his homie. Like, he doesn't respect his dead homie or like, you know, he doesn't really honor his memory. I mean, it's it's like basically the, the equivalent of being totally disgraced in the eyes of the neighborhood if you don't turn up for him now. You know what I'm saying? That is the worst kind of pressure in the world. Plus the girls... They go for street guys, you know what I'm saying? You know, in a lot of these neighborhoods in Chicago, man, I mean, the, the peer pressure to, you know, get involved in that is just enormous. So you don't want your son to face that. You know, you want to be far away from that, especially for the young black guys. I've seen this firsthand, like, daily, okay, in these schools, man. It's overwhelming, and it's something that I would never want to expose, you know, a young man to, especially at a time when he has to be super focused, okay, in order to make it, you know academically and then be able to make a living and support himself when he gets older and not get in any trouble because you know getting in trouble just one time can derail all that you know what i'm saying and when you're starting on the bottom you know what i'm saying which again is one of the one of the after effects of the past oppression that you know african americans face okay starting on the bottom man it's a disadvantage and you have to you can't afford to make the same mistakes that you can afford to make if you got parents that had money right so you got to make it during those teenage years, okay, and be super hyper-focused to be able to get that education, to be able to get that job. So I would not want any distractions in my son's life. I've said this before and I'll say it again, man, because me personally, like I'm still single right now and I'm open to any race. But if I ended up marrying a black woman, okay, we would have to leave Chicago. Like that would be one requirement that I would have, like telling her up front, like if I marry you, like we got to leave this place. You know what I'm saying? I'm not staying here because if I got a son and, you know, I have a mixed son and, you know, he looks black or whatever, and I'm not exposing him to that pressure. You know, if I married a white chick and, you know, I have a, a son that's white, I know he's not going to face that same pressure, that same peer pressure from the streets. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to get mistaken for the wrong guy. And plus, if I have like a, a son that's, you know, half black, he's going to be like light skinned and might look, you know, Hispanic or Puerto Rican or something like that. Then he could get mistaken for the wrong guy just for wearing the, you know, wrong color or something. Like, I'm not exposing my son to that. So, yeah, it depends, but uh, that's, that's just me personally, and, you know, I see, I've seen this from other people, you know, making this mistake, okay, keeping their kids here, thinking, well, my block is not that bad, you know, the block next over, for, you know, to me is kind of bad, but my block is not that bad. Like, this is a, a mentality that people that are desensitized to violence have, you know what I'm saying? I've heard this a million times, like, my block is quiet, but the next block over for me is bad. Like, a person coming from outside of Chicago looking at this situation knows, okay, because they have a clear mentality. They've not been desensitized. If the block next to you is bad, your block is bad. You know what I'm saying? There's no rule that says these guys got to stay in their own block. Bullets travel more than a block. You know what I'm saying? And these guys don't just do drive-bys on ops. They do carjackings. They do burglaries, all that stuff. They're running to get away from the police. They come into your coming to your block now you know the police and them getting to a shootout you don't want to be nowhere near that you need at least a mile of separation okay even if the block two three four or five blocks over from you is bad your block is bad you know what i'm saying even if your block specifically doesn't have any guys you know they're doing that stuff on it living on it or whatever like that you know guys come through shooting up houses they might not shoot up you know any particular house on your block aiming for it or whatever bro you don't want to be nowhere near that 
Nowhere near. A block is way too close for comfort. I've heard so many people say this so many times in Chicago, man, and it, I'm telling you, this is like one of my things that I got to, I'm, I'm trying to stamp out this belief that you can be safe on a particular block when the block next to you has a bunch of gang members on it that are doing that stuff. Like, you can't, man. The whole area has to be safe. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to be brutally honest. The top five neighborhoods in the city, okay, as far as gun violence, Inglewood, Austin, Garfield Park, uh, Roseland, and I think Humboldt Park is still number five. Uh, and with Humboldt Park, like I've said before, that's the western part of Humboldt Park, okay? These five neighborhoods, if you live in those neighborhoods, those are the type of neighborhoods where, you know, even if you don't have kids, me personally, I'm getting out of those neighborhoods today, today, like not tomorrow, not when my kid is going to go into school today. I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to be homeless. I don't care if I have to sleep on a park bench somewhere else in another neighborhood. I'm not staying in those neighborhoods another night. I, I don't know why, you know, why, why I would have been in those neighborhoods in the first place, but I'm just saying like, you know, if anybody like comes to their senses that lives in any of those neighborhoods, I'm sleeping outside in the car, on the street. Like, those are neighborhoods where it's better to be homeless, literally better to be homeless in another neighborhood than to be there in a mansion. Okay, I mean, there's no mansions there, but if there were, you know, it would be better to be homeless than to be there. Literally, literally. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not blowing this out of proportion. The the percentage, okay, of residents of Garfield Park that were shot in a single year was something like, it was like 1% or over, something like 1 out of 74 residents in Garfield Park are shot in a, in a given year. Like, it's that bad, bro. You know what I'm saying? So literally everybody, I mean, I think literally everybody in that neighborhood, like, knows somebody that's been killed or, you know, has a family member that's been killed. Like, everybody's lost somebody. Like, because I taught in that neighborhood, man, you know what I'm saying? In the, at the school, at Marshall High School over there, man. I mean, you have kids, you know, bullet wounds, you know, talking about their brother that died, their uncle that died, their dad that died. Like, everybody knows somebody that died. It doesn't have to be that way, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, the income level, okay, that's in that neighborhood is equivalent to, you know, the income level that you would need to afford, you know, a place that's not going to be great. I mean, it's going to be like, a, a, you know, the, the worst type of place you could possibly get. But in a neighborhood that's safer and safety, man, you can't put a price tag on that. You know what I'm saying? You go out to some of these towns out in the western suburbs, you know, like northwest up by Rockford and stuff like that. You can get a place that's the same price as the place that you can get in Garfield Park. Now, I understand some people got to get to work. Here's the thing. You can get some place off of the metro line. You know, you, you got to plan it. OK, but you can get some place off of the metro line. Where you can get into the city if you do have to, you know, if there's some job that's just golden that you don't want to give it up, um, you can plan that out. You know what I'm saying? If you depend on public transportation. And uh, if you don't depend on public transportation and you got a car, I mean, bro, it's worth the extra gas money. It really is, man. Even if you got to, you know, do whatever you got to do. So that's that, okay, as far as like those type of neighborhoods, the top five. Now, outside of the, if you get out of the top five, okay, you have a lot of other neighborhoods where it's like, it's a gang territory, but it's not like super turn. Now, me personally, if I had kids, I'm not taking, you know, that kind of a risk either. I'm not going any place that a gang controls if I had kids. I mean, I live in a place now where, you know, I mean, there's gangs around, you know, the place where I stay at right now, but I don't have kids. If I had kids, I wouldn't be living here. Um, but one thing that I'll say, though, man, a lot of people, okay, in Chicago, if I think something like 75 to 80 percent of the gun violence victims in the city of Chicago right now are black, about 12 to 20 percent are Latino. The rest are like white and Asian and uh, Arab and everything else. So, you know, if you're Latino, there's a lot of neighborhoods, like I said, that, you know, they're not really super bad, like out by Midway, you know, some some of the uh, neighborhoods to the west of Gage Park on the southwest side. You know, there's gangs there, but it's not like super bad. It's not the kind of neighborhood where I would say like it's a crisis and you have to move immediately. Um, but, you know, if you live in the little village area, the back of the yards area, I mean, those are neighborhoods where you got to, you know, I wouldn't stay there at all, especially if I had kids. Okay. Now, when you, when it comes to the black neighborhoods though, Hyde Park is a neighborhood where, you know, President Obama used to live. It's a nice neighborhood. Uh, and it's a neighborhood where you can stay, I think, okay, I've never lived in Hyde Park, but I think you can stay there and, you know, be relatively safe. I know it's surrounded by gang territories in Hyde Park, um, but I think that in Hyde Park, and again, I'm saying this secondhand, not from personal experience, you can live there and, you know, it's pretty decent. 
But Hyde Park is very expensive. It's very expensive to live in Hyde Park. It's, a, it's an upper class, expensive black neighborhood in Chicago. Outside of Hyde Park, okay, having worked as a cab driver and having worked as a substitute teacher in, in the city of Chicago, and as a substitute teacher, you, you work for the district office. You get sent to all the schools, okay? So having been all around the city as a taxi driver and as a substitute teacher, I personally have never encountered a black neighborhood outside of Hyde Park that's not a gang territory. I don't know of any. If anybody knows any, in, you know, you can leave it in the comments section. Same thing with Latino neighborhoods, man. Black and Latino neighborhoods in Chicago, I'm talking about neighborhoods that are all black or all Latino. Chicago is a very segregated city. I think pretty much they're all gang territories, every single one. So, you know, that's the kind of thing where if I have a son, I'm not staying there. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to be pressured to get into that. He could be mistaken for being the wrong guy or whatever. But after those top five neighborhoods, though, if you, you know, if you don't care about like having some danger, uh, there's a lot of neighborhoods down there where it's like, you know, stuff happens every now and then, but it's not like the constant 24 hour stuff that you get in Inglewood and Garfield Park. Uh, now, one thing that you should do, though, is definitely look at the statistics, okay, because that means everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, that'll give you a good picture of it. I think some of the neighborhoods out by, like, Marquette Park and over there, it's like stuff happens here and there, but not, like, super, you know, super violent. Now, if you, if you don't care about living around white folks and dealing with white folks, okay, if you're black or brown, you have a lot of options on the northwest side. Okay, now some people, they want to live, you know, I know some black folks, they want to live around black folks. You know, brown people, they want to live around other, other Latinos. So if you don't want to be around any white people, you have to leave the city if you want to be in a safe area. Because in Chicago, personally, if you can't afford to live in Hyde Park, I don't know of any neighborhoods that are like 100% safe uh, where there's not, where you don't have to be around a lot of white people. You know what I'm saying? And me personally, I love being around white folks. I mean, that's where I'm at now. But, you know, I blend in. Sticking out is an uncomfortable thing, man. I get that. So if you want to live around other people who look like you, okay, and you're either black or Latino, in Chicago, there's not really any options, like none, except for Hyde Park. So I would say, you know, check the towns out to the northwest, you know, check down south. In those situations, you know, it's best thing to do is probably do what, do what this lady is doing and leave. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to live here on the northwest side, okay, you got a ton of options, man. Anything really north of Belmont Cragen, Okay, and then west of like, I would say Kedzie. So like probably north of Diversity and west of Kedzie, that whole area is good. Okay, there's gangs over there, but I'm telling you, it's like nothing. It's like not on nothing. That whole area, north of north of uh, Diversity and west of Kedzie. Okay, that whole section of the city is sweet. So that's my recommendation. If you want to stay in Chicago, which you can do, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, up, up in that area though, you're going to be around a lot of different, you know, cultures and ethnicities, especially white. And some people don't want to do that. Okay, that's fine. But I'm telling you right now, like, we're not going to be on the same type of stuff that we were on, like, back in the day. Like, you know, back in the day, you know, if a black guy came to our neighborhood, we would get down on him and stuff like that. We're not doing that today in 2021. Like, that's not happening. You know, in a white neighborhood, you're super safe in Chicago. You're safer than you are probably in a, in a black neighborhood, to be honest with you. You know, because your kid could get mistaken for the, being the wrong guy down there. If we mistake him for being the wrong guy, the worst thing, thing that's going to happen is, like, I don't know, like really nothing's going to happen. I mean, Chicago is an extremely, you know, uh, diverse city when you get up north. If you come up north and you see the north side, man, it's not like 100% white at all. It's mixed white, brown, Asian, and some black. Okay, that's how it is. It, like the stereotype that Chicago's, you know, north side is just 100% white is false. That's one of the biggest misconceptions about the city. Like people that, don't, that say that, I don't know if they've ever been up north or what. It's not like that. So uh, that's the option that you have, man. And I know a lot of people that have moved out of the hood to come up north. And uh, they found cheap stuff up here, man. And it found out that it's, like, not that hard. Like, you don't have to get a record deal or, you know, make the NBA to do this. Like, this is easy. You can do it now. You know what I'm saying? With just a regular, like, low-wage job. So that's my advice, man. Uh, don't wait. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this lady, you know, she could have lost her baby. She could have lost her own life. You know what I'm saying? And now she's making this decision, and I'm glad that she's making it, man. But please don't wait. You know, do it before it's too late, man. Because once it happens, you know, you can't get a you can't get a life back. This is boy, when you see the report, I'm out.